What is going on guys? Happy Wednesday. Welcome as always to the Wednesday night live stream. Uh Waterbox doing a live slow now. He's decision. Ha ha ha. Nice. Um speaking of Waterbox, I'm excited to actually be getting one of those soon. They're pretty nice tanks. I've seen them a lot of shows lately. Um, so how is everybody doing today? What's going on? We got Jeff, Jerry, Matt Giles, Shan, Skaha Reef, Harkins Aquatics. Hopefully you guys are all having a fabulous Wednesday. So I know I have talked a little bit about kind of vacations in the past and it's been about a year since I've done it. Now coming up pretty quick here, I'm actually going to be going away for just shy of three weeks. So that's about 20-ish days and it's the longest I've ever been away from my tank. So I figured it'd be a good topic to kind of touch upon as well as just a good refresher even for myself of kind of all the different considerations and things to kind of prepare the tank in order to make sure that it survives me being away and who if someone tanks it's checks on it make sure there's no issues there what is going on dramedy walked in the door just in time what's going on mike so when you're out of town um first things first uh the biggest issue that kind of i worry about is one how long is the ato gonna last uh you know my tank's five and a half six feet it's a lot of surface area I have a 14 gallon ATO, but even that, you know, I get a week out of it. So I have a 35 gallon brute that I'm planning on using. Even that might be cutting it for 10, 20 days. So I might see if someone has like a 50 gallon or a bigger one. Maybe I can borrow something, but it's going to be one of my first things I got to get sorted out. Um, Chris, very fabulous. One production. What's going on? Shan, I got a web control automate the on and off with a Wi-Fi camera. That is nice, actually. I've been meaning to get a Wi-Fi camera for ages, so eventually I think that's a great way to go. So auto top off. Um, earlier in the chat, I was speaking with Matt, and he has his RODI plumb directly to his auto top off, which is cool way to do it. It's a little bit risky for me, unless you have lots of redundancies. But I mean, at least you don't have to worry about ever spilling, or I mean, refilling jugs. But on the flip side, if something ever happened, you just an endless supply of water. So lots of backups if you guys go that that route. Um, yeah, so ATO is also filled up. So bigger ATO bin. If you know, once you know how long your container lasts, having a bigger ATO bin is likely one of the things. Especially if you're gone more than a week or so, right? Most people's ATOs last about a week, five to seven days. So um, top off reagents, another good one. If you're going to be out of town, if you're using a dosing pump, especially having enough of your jugs. Make sure everything's topped off. Make sure your elk, your calcium, your mag, whatever you're dosing to the tanks, topped off. Because you don't want to run out and then your tank's not getting dosed. Um, same thing with a calcium reactor dosing. Make sure it's actually dialed in. So if you're out of town and you know if you're dosing too much, you could just slowly be increasing your parameters. You're not getting regular water changes or whatever else you're doing to normally do, which could potentially be correcting it. So make sure your parameters are stable. Make sure everything's dialed in. Um, another good kind of one with the ATO is make sure you have a siphon break. One of my buddies actually, when he were out of town in Mexico for my wedding, he had a big, you know, 35 gallon brute beside his tank and it didn't have a siphon break. So a siphon break is usually a little hole that will a little bit, bit of water spray through. Um, you can make them pretty easily, even just using like a quarter inch kind of push fitting and drilling a super tiny hole in it and when your auto top offs on it will spray a little bit out but it's also gonna let air in and break that siphon so our buddy texted us a photo showing it and his it literally balanced out the water level equalized with the brute and the sump and it was like millimeters from overflowing it he got super lucky that it overflow um so if you are doing a big container and the odds are it's going to be taller than your sump make sure you have a siphon break that's another big one um hotspot wi-fi nice for check infusion nope exactly if you do have an aquarium controller if you do have wi-fi or you know like a travel sim card type of deal you can double check on your tank make sure everything looks good uh, another thing you can do if like if you do have something like apex with fusion you could if you have a buddy that's a reefer you know give him access to your fusion so he can check up on your tank or he can get alerted if something is that pull your way um another potential one is your skimmer can how often you clean your skimmer if you do a wet skim it could fill up too fast you know it might not last that couple weeks that you're away so you can a lot of skimmers have a drain on the bottom that you can put into a container and then you can set up that container to kind of handle all the stuff coming out of your skimmer now the other option that i try to do is i do a very dry skim so normally i can get a couple weeks out of it anyway so lately i just keep tweaking it open a little more just trying to get it drier and drier so that i know i can stretch out that three weeks or so out of the skimmer before 
having to deal with it. Um, another thing that I also have on mine is Auto, Auto Aqua. They make a smart skimmer security, and it's a little optical sensor that goes through your cup. And if it ever gets tripped, it will turn off your skimmer. So it's a nice kind of backup way if something made your tank go crazy, it's starting to overflow, it will kill power to your skimmer, and that can prevent an overflow or spillage or any type of stuff. Uh, another one to consider, most people have filter socks. If you, you know, your socks only last four or five days, if you're gone more than a week, I would honestly probably just take the socks out of your tank. Um, you could, if you have one of those tanks, have like, you know, four of them or more, like you have a bunch of socks, put all new socks in, make sure you got that extra buffer or just remove them, let the water flow through. If you're not there, it doesn't necessarily have to be crystal clear anyway, so not a big deal. Um, if you're doing a filter roller, make sure you have a nice fresh roll on there. You know, if you're getting down to the end, maybe open the bypass door a little more so it doesn't get used up as quick, just so that's not running out of kind of filter roll as you're going. Um, auto feeder, 100%. So with mine, I have an auto feeder and it feeds kind of two snacks a day. It feeds around noon and around 3 p.m. I think. Just a small morsel, so I'm probably going to up that so it feeds a lot more. I normally feed out nori, nori in the mornings. They get their snacks in the day and then frozen at night, so my fish are way too spoiled. I'm likely overfeeding the tank, but everyone's happy. Everything's growing well, so that's okay. So likely auto feeder. Um, if you have an auto feeder, make sure you're using it for a while. Don't just get a brand new auto feeder, put it on the tank and then go away. So some auto feeders, you know, they can dump in way too much food. I have the Neptune one is like turned down to the lowest setting. Otherwise it dumps out way too many pellets. Um, so the Neptune one, I mean, is loud, but works well. There's another brand that's basically the same as the Neptune one. Uh, the Eheim one's pretty good too. Uh, how many hours a week would you say you spend editing, interviewing, etc.? Many, many. Um, just for doing YouTube stuff, I'm going to guess 8 to 10 hours a week I probably spend on YouTube related activities, so lots. Far too much of my life. It's pretty much like a full-time job. <laughs> uh, greetings from Poland. 12 p.m. watching you. It's sick. You're inspiring me. Keep doing what you're doing. Thanks so much, Cody. That's awesome. <laughs> Love to inspire. Uh, so Matt, one danger of running the drain from your skimmer to a container is if your skimmer starts to overflow for whatever reason, it'll start pumping out water of your tank. Nope, 100%. So if you do go that route and have a container, it's ideally it's good to have a controller or something. So you can have a float switch or something in your container. So if it fills up too fast, it will turn it off and you're not gonna be forever overflowing your skimmer. And I was actually debating the other day if it was worth like piping the skimmer directly to the drain, but that is a huge risk, right? If it starts going crazy, I mean, it could just keep dumping out water from your tank, your top off is gonna kick on, and then it's just gonna keep diluting your salt water more and more. Uh, so Ryan, lucky I have very experienced people around me to look after my tank, but I still worry myself while on holidays. No, 100%. If you have a friend who's a reef keeper, best person to check on your tank, right? They already know what's going on. They have something's off. They're probably going to be pretty good at detecting it, and they're going to have a good idea what to do. Um, if you're just getting family or someone else that's not a hobbyist to look after it, you want to make sure you have detailed instructions for them. Um, I also find if it's someone who's not a reef keeper, they're going to likely overfeed your tank. So it's a good idea to have pre-portioned food. Like if you feed frozen, have it kind of pre-portioned, right? Or if you're doing like a cubomyces, you know, okay, one keeper day type of thing. Um, if they're manually feeding pellets, get one of those little pill like weekly things like the Sunday, Monday, Tuesday, and you know, pre-portion out all your food and just tell them to dump in one of those a day. Good way to do it. Um, do you set your AC well away? Yep. I leave my AC on just like normal it'd probably get too hot in the house if i didn't so yeah i as far as the ac knows i'm still home and it just does the thing uh what's going on paul okay so pre-portion your food if you have an auto feeder you can set that up um i would really recommend you have one for at least a week or two before you go away make sure you know it's not going to over dump too much into your food and then just pollute your tank now another point that brings is don't Add any new equipment for a week or two before you leave. You buy something new, it's tempting to put it on, don't do it. Um, you don't know how it's going to react, you don't know how stable it's going to be, you don't know if it's, you know, one of my previous trips, you know, when I bought my now skimmer in the spring, you know, I was so tempted to put it on, but I'm like, nope, made myself wait until I got back from vacation, or one of the reef shows rather, before I put it on, just because there's always that risk of something happening, you know, or your skimmer's extra happy and excited at first, or, you know, maybe someone doses something to the tank and it makes your skimmer go crazy. So always never change anything a week or two before you leave. 
if you have not cleaned any of your pumps in a long, 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 long time, you can, you know, clean all your pumps before you leave. But, you know, I'd still say do it two weeks ahead of time. That way, you know, if anything happens, you know, it's an optimal working condition. Uh, <laughs> reefing with O. Don't change anything. I screwed my tank multiple times by installing stuff before I leave on vacation. Yep, change nothing. Let your tank get in its groove. Make sure it's in its groove for at least a few weeks, and then you got way less risk of anything going going wrong. Uh, so Joey just got back from vacation. Prepackaged food, labeled everything. Awesome. Blue tape and detailed instructions. Still stressed out the entire time. But sounds like the tank was okay, so that's promising. Um, if it's someone looking after your tank that is not a hobbyist, it's good to leave, you know, some emergency contact information. Like, if this happens, you know, do this. Or, you know, have a phone number for a buddy that's a reefer or like an LFS that can do an emergency call, just if they had to. Um, another good one, battery backup. At the very least, you should have a battery backup for your power heads. Um, like I know the Vortec ones, I've done videos on that because you can hook up a direct battery to them. Super cheap and easy to do a battery backup. Um, if you don't have one of those, I know IceCap makes them, a bunch of other ones. There's always like a UPC or like an APA, UPS. Even that, just one single power head having that battery backup is going to potentially save your tank and extend a power outage. If nothing else, having that flow goes a long way. What's going on, Terrence Michael Clicklax? All right, so now if you have an aquarium controller, make sure your I got a haircut, yes. Make sure your alerts are actually turned on. So there's a bazillion alerts you can do. You know, if something's up, send you an alert to it. Um, so make sure those are actually enabled. And again, if you have a buddy, you know, give them access to your controller, your fusion, whatever it is, and they can check on your tank as well. If they see something's up, it gives them kind of that little heads up to come check on your tank while you're away. Um, so Ryan, even though I trust them, I still worry about my expensive acros. Yep, exactly. But yeah, same thing. If you're doing dosing, make sure you're dosing your calcium reactor, whatever it is, make sure it's dialed in and stabled, you know, at least a couple weeks ahead of time. That way, you know, every, you're not worrying about your elk or any of your stuff trending upwards or downwards, you know, it's stable. It's going to be pretty reliable. Give Apex a kiss before you go on vacation. Yep. Be giving a couple big kisses to the tank next week. Um, so make sure all your equipment's working. Do not change anything before you leave. Um, ideally, it's always a good idea to have that extra RODI or salt water mixed up if something was to happen. That way it's really easy for whoever's there to deal with it. What's going on, Woody? So if something was to happen and you have a tank sitter and you need to direct them to do, say, a water change or add an auto top off, make it easy for them, right? If you can have those jugs on hand sitting there by your tank, you know, if there's towels, you got got your towels, everything go there. You want it to be as stress-free as possible, as easy as possible if someone has to do something for you while you're away. So just make sure everything's out, it's accessible, they're not hunting for it. If you have any spare equipment, I mean, even leave that on the counter by your tank, all the type of stuff, it's going to prepare. For the most part, I mean, if your tank has been stable, it's automated, you probably don't have too much to worry about. For me, I mean, auto feeder, make sure that's, you know, a couple extra helpings and making sure I have a massive AGO container is really the two biggest things on my mind right now. Uh, Joey just started having issues with precipitation, or at least I think it is. I have my dosing time to dose about 30 minutes to so different averages. So, of course, being added. Um, anything to suggest? So check what your calcium elk and your mag are. Usually if it's precipitating, it could be because one of them's out of whack. So I just check them all and make sure everything's still in line. 30 minutes between should be plenty. If you're doing a big dose, that could be it. If you're doing just little doses, it's less and less of an issue. Uh, uh, click clack, say dev, treating dino with crews. Should the calcium reactor be turned off? Uh, it doesn't make a difference that you can leave your dosing on as normal and treating for dinos. That is completely separate, so you're all good. Um, having a controller, reefing with though, having a controller definitely makes vacationing easier, yes. Uh, being able to check on your tank is a good, definitely a good peace of mind. Especially if you, you know, you got your Wi-Fi hotspot, pull up your phone, just check on everything, make sure it's all good. Um, another nice thing to have, I've thought about this for ages, I still haven't done it, but getting a Wi-Fi IP camera set up so you can just check on your tank. You know, have one so you can see your tank or you can see your sump. If something was up, you got an alert, you know, your fusion's like, oh, this is high, this is low. Then you can, you know, connect your camera and look around and make sure everything looks fine. So it's another kind of good way to be able to do stuff remotely. Uh, do, 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 do. Again, too, if someone is looking in your tank, they don't necessarily need to pop by every day. Every couple days is likely good enough. 
Having a controller makes it easier. Yep. Uh, create a checklist before leaving as well. Oh, good call, Paul. So you are kind of panicked, you know, stuff's going on. You're flustered, you know, last minute packing, last minute arranging. My dog's out the door. So my dog's like a raptor. You know, so it's open doors. You guys ever seen that movie, uh, you know, Jurassic Park? Everyone's seen that one. You know, in there in the kitchen and the raptor's like, ch -ch -ch -ch, opens the door. Every time he tries to come in, he just stands up and shakes hand until it opens. Uh, do do do. Uh, use that method. Elk was climbing and talked to Cruz, said shut down the raptor only because the elk was climbing. So, what, yeah, I'm not quite sure on that one, Phil, why your elk was climbing with that, but yeah, I mean, if it's too high, you could always just turn it down or turn it off. Easy way it works. Uh, Nest Cam, cheap and easy. No. Uh, making a trip tomorrow to Canada. boy, Nathan. So, in 10 days or so, I am going to the Caymans for a coral restoration project, which is going to be pretty cool. So, I'm going to be out there and helping restore the reefs. So, that's going to be a really cool trip. I'm kind of excited for that. We need to go out there and actually help with the coral trees and replanting corals. That'll be pretty cool. So I'm doing that for a week, and then after that, going to Orlando. And then the wife's going to meet me down there, and we're going to do a few days of Disney and then go to Macna. So I'm kind of excited. It's going to be my, my longest trip ever that I've ever been away from the tank. So part of one of the things, a good reminder of just everything to keep with and do. Uh, Joey Trident is dosing 75 mils a day, 72 on elk. I uh, took off the automatic dosing because it changed my 30 minute wait time when I first set it up, but I haven't noticed the white film that is hard. Check what your magnesium is too, Joy. Uh, keep it at bay, what's there? Macna's your backyard, nice. Yeah, so if any of you guys are going to Macna, definitely make sure you come and say hi. It's gonna be, should be a good one. I'm in Orlando, it's a great excuse to go to Disney. If you're, you know, we've got a significant other, just sell them on Disney and you can get to sneak in Mac and Disney. Win win. So, yeah. Thanks, Aqua Splendor. I'm kind of I'm excited for it. It was the same price to go to the Caymans and back as it was to go to Caymans to Orlando and then back to Kelowna. So, it kind of was like, all right, just made sense to do it. So, that will be good. Uh, any experience with Smarter Reefers Reefsicle Melting Food Popsicle? I do not. Um, I've seen a few different products where you can put frozen food in a little cone and it will slowly melt and drip into the tank. It's kind of a cool way to do it. Um, another thing I want to try at some point is Nios makes mysis shrimp that does not need to be refrigerated. So you can put it on a doser. So I actually want to get that and try that because that'd be perfect for when you're out of town, right? Because you can have it feeding mysis on a dose schedule. So I think that would be really cool to do. So. I'm going to look at that one. I mean, it's too late now, but in a future trip, I think that'd be an awesome way to do it. Uh, bacteria seems to knock it off the back. Uh, yeah, so Phil, you're training for dino, so not 100%. So it looks like you, for the most part, beat the dino, which is awesome to hear. Uh, Meg dropped once I had a coral, and an RTN noticed dinos. Not sure about the death, the coral start of the dinos. Uh, next month's video is about how to recover from a crash. No, no, hopefully no crashes. Um, I should actually do a tank update video because when I come back, all my tanks are moving. It's going to be new tanks. So maybe like the last update of this tank until it's all broken down and moved. So going to be gone. Still here for another 10 days or so and gone for, you know, 20 ish days. And then we just bought the house, so moving up and going to be brand new tank. I'm going to do the water box plants at the top of the stairs. And then I posted some photos a few months back. I picked up a used 60-ish gallon frag tank, and then I'm going to put that one in my office. So I'm going to do a whole new office, new tank, so everything's moving. So moving tanks is going to be a huge pain in the butt, but it'll be fun to do it. And two new tanks, which should be pretty cool. So I'm kind of excited. So lots lots of stuff's in the work. So there's a lot of things I've been thinking about that I haven't changed so far just because I know the tanks are moving. So there's no point diving too deep into messing with anything that's working right now. Uh, now we know for our face the dinos again. Good old dinos. Hey, I'm happy to hear a lot of you guys are actually beating dinos. There's so many people I've seen in the past have shut down tanks because of it. So, so easy to get past it, which is good. Uh, waste away in Microbacter 7. Perfect. Uh, ATM and Okay, so waste away is important. You need that one. As for the one and only, the Microbacter, the colony, that one doesn't matter as much. That's just reintroducing the beneficial bacteria. So, sorry, slight sidetracked onto Dino since the you guys are talking about in the chat. So, essentially, quick and dirty, you're dosing the waste away. That helps fight the dinos. 
your dosing carbon source to help build up that army of dino fighting. Um, once it's up there, you're dosing a bit of peroxide through your skimmer, which will help tone down that bacteria army so it doesn't like overpopulate the tank, cut the carbon dosing. And then your colony or your microbacter or your ATM or whatever you want to use is helping to reinduce the good bacteria after you've kind of toned it down with the peroxide. So that's kind of the, the quick and dirty about how to kind of fight it. We can dig into that one again in another stream or more if you guys got specific questions on it, but it's a good way to do it. All right, guys, so how about you? Any other things that I haven't covered that you think is important for vacationing or stuff that would be good to hit up? Um, so auto feeder, don't put it on right before you leave. Use it for a couple weeks. Make sure your portions are correct. Make sure it's not just dumping food into the tank. ATO, get a really big one. Make sure it can handle... Make sure you know how much your tank evaporates. Make sure it can handle that duration. For instance, I know my one right now will not handle it. My 35 gallon one is honestly questionable. So I'm gonna try and see if we can find like a 50, 55 gallon type of container. That'll hopefully be good. Um, got a tank sitter. Make sure you give them a bit of a checklist, emergency contact info, throw another reefer, even better. Um, if you have someone feeding your tank, pre-portion the food. Otherwise they will overfeed. 100% overfeed, they always do. Just remember that. They don't have a tank, they're gonna overfeed it. Um, filter socks. Honestly, just take them out. If you got a filter roller, make sure you got lots of roll on it, or open your little bypass door more so that it will last longer. Uh, do 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 do. So, uh, good ATO, 100%. Um, same thing. Make sure you have a siphon break on your ATO. I've seen that happen to my buddy as well as other people. Is <laughs> make sure the tanks are nose vodka for dosing up or drinking. Nice. Um, if you don't have a siphon break and you're using a larger container, it will drain into your tank and it will keep going unless you have a float valve or something to stop it. Now, if it's just a regular pump driven ATO, it's gonna keep on draining until it equalizes with your container. So a float valve or you know a solenoid or a siphon break, some kind of system to make sure it doesn't keep siphoning your tank is important and goes a long way. If you have your controller, make sure your alert's set up. Um, if you have a buddy or someone that else has, you know, like Fusion or an Apex or something, you can add them on there so then get those to your tank, get those notifications as well. Uh, notification on leak detectors, yep, 100%. If you have leak detectors, you know, make sure they're programmed. You know, if something happens, you know, turn off whatever equipment's likely the cause of it as well as send you an alert. So you can be text or call your buddy and say, hey, go check on my tank. Um, if you do have a buddy, you know, maybe leave him a key for your house so we can actually come and check on it. Or if you got a door code, you know, make him a code. All those type of things go a long way. Uh, Matt, have you ever tried putting auto fuel that drops it in the sump and return pump? Some kind of channel. I sure have. Matt, you're way behind on my videos. Um, I have done many revisions of that. I've actually never had an auto feeder on at the top of my tank. So I did start with one. The original one had a, like just drop in the sump, and then it had a funnel, and then a funnel with a little tube that went to the return pump. Then I had a little water line in it to swirl it because it was getting funky and sitting there. Now, super simple. I have auto feeder in the sump, and I have a power head, and the power head cranks 100%, about 10 minutes before the auto feeder comes on, stays on for about half an hour, drops all the pellets in, and the little re um, power head keeps all the pellets swirling and suspended in the return chamber until they get sucked into the tank. So usually within a few minutes, they'll all end up getting shot into the tank. And you got no equipment on the rim of your tank, it keeps everything looking good and it works out really well. What is going to produce a reef? Yeah, um, okay. So there's no real issue that I've had with little pellets getting stuck in the return line. They fire into the tank fairly quickly. So that hasn't really been an issue. Um, the biggest thing for me is when I had like a funnel or something trying to direct them to the pump, they would get kind of stuck in there. You need some kind of a water flow to kind of keep it circulating, moving and force those pellets down rather than them just floating there. And that was, so yeah, literally power head and auto feeder was the easy solution after about 10 different revisions. So a good way to go. Uh, what kind of small power head? Doesn't really matter. You just want something high flow. The main consists concern is that you don't want your pellets to potentially settle at the bottom of your sump and just decay or rot down there, right? So lots of flow, that way it keeps them suspended, it keeps them moving around until they get sucked into their turn pump. So honestly, you can use whatever you want for that. So make sure your equipment's clean, uh, pump doesn't break, crust, no. Um, I've dosed all kinds of stuff in my sump. And yeah, pellets, especially little tiny pellets, I mean, they fly through there like nothing. I have the Vector M1 return pumps. If you take them apart and clean them, it's kind of like a circle, kind of spirally blade, and it just kind of fires stuff up. It doesn't really chop it up. 
um, maybe like a propeller based one might but most of the like the jbos and the ecotechs and a lot of the ones i've used like it's just the propeller designs pretty good for just kind of forcing it up what's going on ironworks aquatic um so yeah skim overflow super duper dry skim easy solution um you could go to an external container but if you do make sure that there's some way of turning off your skimmer if it ever gets full you know if you have a controller use a float switch or that auto wax uh, smart skimmer controller i have that in mind so if it ever gets too on the cup shuts it off nice and easy uh, i think that's most of my pro tips i thought of today uh, turn on your apex heartbeat yes 100 percent. you have an apex turn that heartbeat on if your power goes out or it's disconnected from fusion somehow it will give you an alert um, it's only a few clicks you just click on your little profile picture and go down to i think it's just heartbeat underneath there and set that up so if that is not set up definitely do that Something else kind of cool. Someone just sent me this the other day. Got this last night. So I played a little bit. It's kind of cool. Little cell phone filter. It is doo -doo -doo -doo. Sea Dreams Aquarium. So I took a couple photos under the blues and it actually worked really well. So I just got to play with that a bit more, but it's kind of a cool little one. So far, so good. So sitting on my desk, thought I'd share. Um, doo -doo -doo. You. All right, guys, do you guys have any other tips that I didn't cover? Is there anything that you think would be awesome to do for preparation? Anything you do different than me? I'm definitely curious to know about it. Um, IP camera, if you have one set up by the tank, I have seen an app that I used to use on my iPad. I'd set it up. It would let me connect to the iPad and use it as a camera. It was free. I don't remember the name of it offhand, but just sparked me, so I might even set that up on the way. Uh, doo -doo 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 -doo. All right, I think I got it. If you guys have any other questions, let me know. This is going to be a shortest stream today because I'm helping my parents move today. So I got to use a couple trips and help them out tonight. Um, next week, I should be good for a live stream. After that, I'm going to be away for those three weeks. So I likely will not be here for a stream, not next week, but the weeks, a couple weeks after that. If I have a chance, I will try and pre-edit a video so there's still something for this time slot because I hate leaving you guys hanging. So if I still got to, you know, edit my Monday videos first, and if I still have more videos I can work with, then I'll try and fit them in for the Wednesdays. I do still have a bunch of content and interviews and stuff from Rap and some of the other shows that I still have to put together. So I'm going to start digging through that over the next week or so and hopefully get a bunch of stuff prepped just so I got something. Don't leave you guys hanging. All right, if you guys are watching the replay later, any other tips, put them in the comments. I'm going to call it for today because i got to run and help them do some more trips and moving. Uh, Joey, thanks for your help. Always appreciate it. Thank you as well. Make sure your tank sitter doesn't freak out or do anything without your knowledge first. Very, very true. A relevant question. Kessel or Radeon? Personally, I prefer Radeons. I've never owned a Kessel, but I've owned many Radeons. I just like how you have more control over them. Uh, the new Kessel, the 360X, I think it is, 350X, 360X, you have more color channels, which I do think that's cool. I do like that. But prior to that point, I've always been, felt restricted with only white and blue. I like the ability to tweak it because, you know, greens and red, certain ones, you can bring out those colors more in your tank. So I like the extra colors. So I've always been a big radio fan. All right, guys. Hopefully, radio all the way. Atta boy, Woody. And, and, and other fun stuff. Oh, yeah, one other sneak peek. I might actually do a video on this one. Uh, I've been beta testing Mobius, which is Ecotech's new platform they've been working on. So I might actually do a video on that one this weekend and give you guys a bit of a sneak peek. I know that one's probably coming out at Macna or sometime in the near future. Maybe this fall, this winter, but yeah, pretty cool. Um, so yeah, that might be Monday's video. See, perfect. All right, guys, if you enjoyed it, as always, thumbs up button. Um, any questions let me know in the comments and I will see you guys on Monday's video and next week's stream. Alright guys, thanks.